Welcome back to the lesson 2 of introduction to signals and system. Here we will see the basic definition of a system and the classification of a system. So, what is a system? A system is basically a device or can be thought of a combination of devices which can operate upon signals and produces corresponding response. Normally, an input to a system can also be thought of an excitation which goes to give an output or response. A system can have one or more inputs. So, the best example is a communication system where we have a number of multiplexers and demultiplexers working in order to process and give the information. Coming to the broader classification of systems, we have linear, nonlinear systems, time variant and time invariant systems, linear time variant and time invariant systems, the static and dynamic systems, causal and non-causal systems, invertible and non-invertible systems, stable and unstable systems. When do we call a system to be linear and non-linear? Whenever the principle of superposition and homogeneity is being met. For such kind of systems, we can call them to be as linear system. If you see into the example which is cited out it here, where we talk about two inputs x1 of t and x2 of t, which goes to give two outputs respectively as y1 of t and y2 of t. According to the principle of superposition and homogeneity, for any transformation being applied to the input signals x1 of t and x2 of t with some system constants defined as a1 and a2. This would give us a signal which could be represented as A1 transformation of x1 of t plus A2 transformation of x2 of t. Now, what is this transformation of A1 x1 of t plus A2 x2 of t? This transformation would rather give us a1 y1 of t which is the output view the respective input x1 of t and yt as the output for the input x2 of t. Thus from the above expression it is clear that the response of overall system is equal to the response of individual system. Now, we are, we are ready to see one example. Say suppose we have equation y of t which is equal to x square of t. Now, let us try to find out this solution and to define whether this function which is given is linear system whether the system function is linear or the system function is nonlinear. Writing down y1 of t function for the given function would tell us for transformation of x1 of t. Here, if you look, the function is expressed as x square of t. So, the above expression comes as x1 square of t. 
similarly for y2 of t if you go to look for the transformation of the signal would be on x2 of t which would give us the function as x2 whole thing square of t. Thus, if we want to write down this function in terms of the equation, it would look something like this. Transformation along with the constants for the functions x1 of t and x2 of t would give us a1 the constant for the function input x1 of t plus a2 x2 of t whole thing square. Now, if you observe this equation on the right hand side and we go back to the previous slide, do you find the equation shown is it equal to a 1 y 1 of t plus a 2 y of t? No, it is not equal to the equation which was shown in the previous slide. Thus, what can we infer from here? We can infer that the system is non-linear in nature. Now, let us talk about time variant and time invariant system. If you talk about a time variant system, it is considered that the input and the output characteristics will surely vary over the period of time. Whereas, if it is not varying over the period of time, such kind of systems are said to be invariant in nature. If you see in the given example of the equations, for a time invariant system, y of n comma of t is equal to y of n minus of t, where t is the time period, n is the instant at which it is invariant. Whereas, the condition for time variant system can be defined by y of n comma t is not equal to y of n minus of t. What does y of n comma of t dictate? y of n comma of t tries to find out the change in the input which is caused by the transformation in the system equation for the input x of n minus of t. n minus of t is the instant for which decides the condition of the signal at present with respect to the past. Thus, y of n minus of t dictates what is the change in the output happening from the past. To see a simple example, we have suppose we have a given equation as y of n is equal to x of minus of n, x of minus of n. So, if we want to define this for y of n comma of t, y of n comma of t, 
this would be like transformation of the signal x n minus of t as the given signal is with respect to x of minus of n So, as you find the value of y of n is equal to x of minus of n. So, this value we will now substitute into this equation where we go to define it as t of x of minus of n minus of t. So, the transformation which is happening on this system would rather give us a signal with a function x of minus of n minus of t. You can number this equation as 1. Now, let us try to find out the value of y of n minus of t. For the value of y of n minus of t, if it is x of minus of n minus of t, so this could be better defined as x of minus of n plus of 3. So, if you compare the equation which we have derived for y of n comma of t where we found the value to be x of minus of n minus of t and the value of y of n minus of t to be x of minus of n plus of t. On comparing these two, what do you find? whether they are equal or not equal. Next coming down to linear time variant and time invariant system. This is a combination of the first two cases which we have seen. Linearity imposes that it should have superposition and homogeneity principles and its input and output characteristics should vary with time. So, such kind of systems can be called as time variant or better called as linear time variant system. But if we talk about linearity with time invariant systems, it will follow the superposition and homogeneity, but the input and the output characteristics will not vary over the period of time. Then comes static and dynamic systems. Static as it tells about the present value of the system where there is no need of any memory, whereas dynamic system demands the value which is present in the memory. This could be the system output for the past as well as the present value. In the example one, if you see, we can see a equation which is written as y of t is equal to 2 of t. For the present value, if we consider it to be t equal to 0 when the system starts, the system output calculated for the inputs y is equal to 0 would depend only upon the present input. Thus, the equation goes to present a system which is memoryless or static. 
In the second example, if we see y of t is equal to 2x of t plus 3x of t minus of 3. So, if we assume the present value of t is equal to 0, we could compute the given example 2 equation as y of 0 which is equal to 2x of 0 plus 3x of 0 minus of 3 which comes as minus of 3. So, if you look into this function x of minus of 3 this depicts a past value for the present input 0. Thus, this system requires a memory to get its output. Such kind of system is called as a dynamic system. Next, we have causal and non-causal system. A causal system is one whose output depends upon present as well as past inputs, but does not depend upon the future input. Whereas, the case for a non-causal system includes the future inputs as well. Here, we have an example where the system equation y of n is equal to 2 of x t plus 3 x t minus of 3 is shown. For present value, if t is equal to 1, then what will be the system output? The system output value is computed as y of 1 2x of 1 plus 3x of minus of 2, where the system output depends upon present and past inputs. Thus, such kind of systems can be called as a causal system. The next example we have got y of n is equal to 2 x of t plus 3 x t minus of 3 plus 6 x t plus of 3. Here you can see the variables with present function, past function as well as future. So, if we assume the present value of t is equal to 1, then what is the system output? The system output comes as y of 1 is equal to 2x of 1 plus 3x of minus of 2 plus 6x of 4. Thus, the system output depends upon future input as well which depicts that such kind of system have the non-causal nature. Then comes invertible and non-invertible system. If you see a system where the input of the system appears at the output, where you can see in the diagram represented by the input x of t having a transfer function h of t where two system inputs are going to give you the y of t is equal to x of t. If you try to obtain the function, the transfer function of such kind of system which will depict the output is to input behavior, you will find that the output input are equal to each other. Such cases are called to be invertible, whereas if we do not find the output is equal to the input, then systems are called to be non-invertible in nature. Then we have stable and unstable systems. This is particularly gathered or accounted from the criteria of bounded input, bounded output for stability. For a bounded input, if the output is unbounded, then it becomes as an unstable system. 
whereas if we have a system where the output is bounded for the bounded input then it is called to be stable system. Also it is important to note that for a bounded signal the amplitude is finite it does not keeps on increasing after a certain value. So, if you want to understand this we can better cite an example of a geyser which is getting heated up up to a certain level where you can see the temperature rise across the period of time being represented by a bounded signal. If a breakdown happens then the system will stop working. An example of this you can see y of t is equal to x square of t. If the input is an input is your unit step signal which is a bounded input then the output will be given as the bounded output as well causing the system to be a stable system. Next if the same case is taken for the integration of the function y of t output where we try to understand the nature of the signal of x of t. Here if we assume the x of t is a ramp signal which is keeping on increasing thus it shows its unbounded nature. Thus, the system becomes unstable. Particularly, if you want to talk about a unbounded system, it is most important to note that an unbounded system will go to have its time being represented over the infinite period. causing the system to be unstable. That is why we have represented the ramp signal as the best example for it. Now we have come over to the reflection spot where we need to take a pause and think about the definition of system, its classification. So, yes, I think so you have now able to differentiate the different types of systems along with the system. So, the very first thing which must come to your mind is what is a system for you it may be electric motor and what are the different types of system in broader classification. It can be different kinds of system classified under the continuous system like amplifiers, integrators, differentiators and filter circuits or it can be discrete systems like the semiconductor memories, shape registers, digital devices, microcontroller, microprocessor or any advanced embedded processor. So, we have now come to the end of lesson number 2 where we have understood why we need to study the different kinds of system. The different kinds of system will basically help you to understand the basic types of signals also and how you can apply those signals to the system and where in real life applications we can use this type of signals. My next lecture will be contribution towards understanding the basic types of signals and the real life applications of the different types of signals around us. Thank you.